back to a Minecraft video that is not inside Minecraft, as you can probably tell. Um, this video will be how to set up a Minecraft Forge server on a VPS. Um, now, I've seen videos online for how to set up a vanilla server on a VPS, how to set up, you know, I've even seen how to set up a bucket server on a VPS, but Forge is different and people don't really understand that. And so this server, or I mean this uh, video will actually help if you want to set up a regular Forge server too, because what, you're, what we're first going to do, I'll explain the process real quick, is we're going to first create the server, and then we're going to make it on our regular computer, and then move it over to the VPS, that way it's um, a lot easier to create it here and move it over there, because just doing it on the VPS is much harder, and it's much harder to transfer files and stuff. Um, so, the pros of having, you know, your Minecraft server on a VPS is that first off it's way cheaper um, and by way cheaper um, my VPS right now is ten dollars for four gigabytes uh, I don't know keep the current color scheme <laughs> um, my current uh, you know VPS is ten gig four gigabytes for ten dollars they have you know some for twenty dollars for eight gigabytes it's honestly a great deal um, the one problem with it is that you uh, it's harder to set up a server. You don't get, you know, hosting. You don't get support. You have to go look for support online. But um, I am pretty innovative about, like, not like innovative in creating stuff myself. But I, you know, like doing stuff like this, and I'm able to kind of figure out stuff easily. And so I was able to kind of figure out how to do this stuff. Um, the con, of course, or I mean, yeah, I told you the con. But um, a good way to fix this is to get MultiCraft. I tried MultiCraft. The trial version, I didn't like it because it's very hard to add jars into the um, multi-craft daemon. And so I decided that I wouldn't do multi-craft, I'd just do this. And so, what you're going to need for this tutorial, you will need some kind of forge version. Here I have forge 1.7.10 dot whatever. And um, if it's an older version, I believe it comes in a dot jar file. These newer versions come in a dot uh, exe. Either one, as long as it says forge on it, it's good. Um, you're going to want WinSCP. Many people use FileZilla, but I find that WinSCP is a lot easier to use for stuff like this. It's a lot um, better designed, and it looks more like you know a Windows Explorer window. Um, you're also going to need something called Putty, and let me get the icon for it real quick. If we come right here. Putty is a... Oh, it was already here. Putty is a thing that lets you communicate with your server through command line. So if you've ever done uh, dash cmd on your computer, this is what a command line kind of looks like. You know, you can type in IP config or whatever, and you know, run that, get your IP, stuff like that. Um, this is an optional because, and I'll put it under optional over here because some servers like mine, VPS servers, online they actually let you access the KVM or the command prompt online, so it's not needed to have um, putty installed if that's the case, but I'd highly suggest it because it's much easier to run your server because you wouldn't have to go online every time you have to go fix something in your server. Um, because we will use this to temp or we'll use this as the command line for your server, so you put commands in and everything. Um, <clears throat> once you have that, the only other thing you're going to need is a folder. So, what we're going to do is we're going to click new folder, we're just going to call this Minecraft server. YouTube just like that okay now that we have our folder here's what we're gonna do let's move these all together um, you're gonna first open up forge double click on it it'll ask you if you want to confirm click yes and then after just a second it'll pop up with a window and um, basically what the window is gonna ask me is if I want to install the client or the server um, People that will want to get on your server, here we go. People that will want to get on your server will want to install the client. That installs it on their Minecraft, that way they can play. Since you're creating a server, you click on install server. And you'll choose the Minecraft directory as the default. Just click this browse button. Let it load real quick and it will bring up, you know, click on desktop, go wherever your thing is, and click on the folder. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Minecraft server YouTube. Click open. And there we go, it's on Minecraft server YouTube. Um, click OK. It'll do its thing, and then um, I'll get right back to you guys when it has finished doing its thing. Okay, guys, so this is what you get when you are done, and it will say successfully downloaded Minecraft server, downloaded blank libraries, and installed Forge. Um, this 15, the reason I said blank is because this 15 might not always be 15. 
in the future they might add more libraries, in the future they might delete more libraries, um, condense them into one library, so it might change like um, that number. So you're just going to click OK, and now if you come into the Minecraft server, you can see we have three things. We have our libraries, which is what it said we downloaded 15 of. And if you go and count on like the inside of those, there's 15. We have the Forge folder, which you may notice is also kind of the um, Forge. If you used to play Forge, how you used to have to put it inside your Minecraft versions folder. And we have our Minecraft server, 1.7.10. Um, now, the problem that many, many, many people make is that they will click on Minecraft server 1.7.10 because if you run a regular Minecraft server this is what you click on you double click it opens up the thing and you start your server but that is completely wrong when you're doing forge um, and I think honestly this shouldn't be here this should be somewhere in the libraries but forge does not do that and so what this is basically for is when you start up this so this is the one you want to click on when you start up this it'll actually basically point to this and say will run this, but we will also run all the mods that will soon be in the mods folder. And um, speaking of the mods folder, to get that mods folder, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to double click on this Forge Universal thing. Um, so not the server. We're going to double click on it. We're going to give it a little bit. It'll give us a logs folder and a mods folder. If we just wait just a tiny bit for them to pop up, there's our logs. And there's our mods. And if we wait a tiny bit longer, it'll also actually pop up a... Um, window you know that starts the minecraft server but i'm not going to wait for that yet because what we want to do here is we're going to open up this we're going to or we're going to right click here we're going to do new and we're going to go text document um now once in this text document what you're going to do is once it loads taking eternity okay so you're going to name it run.bat um it doesn't have to be called run.bat it can actually be called anything.bat it's just um easier to name it run.bat in my opinion um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to right click on run.bat and we're going to click on sorry that's not run.bat right click on run.bat and click edit um, it's good you don't double click on it because then it will open it up a different way um, and actually we need to change that in just a second but um, in here you're going to type the following you're going to go java dash xmx and then you're going to put a gigabyte amount. My computer right now has 4 gigabytes, and so I'm just going to assign 3 gigabytes. But my VPS has 4. Um, and then dash XMS, and then the same thing, 3G. And then you're going to go dash jar, and then we're going to put the jar file name. Um, the jar is, of course, this one right here. And so we're going to take this, just click on it once, wait a little bit, click on it again. Command copy, come back over here, paste it, and add dot jar at the end. Then we're going to do dash o and no GUI. There we go, just like that. And that will basically say we don't want it to give us a certain thing when it's on the server. So we're going to press file, save. Actually, we're going to use save as because I forgot to do this before. Um, and change this to all files, run.bat, go. Yes, replace it close out of this and there's our run.bat um, we actually need to like one sec why is it as a open it's put as a where's that hmm oh that's why because I didn't save as all files did I save no I don't want to replace so I want to actually I'm here. That is so weird. One sec, guys. Let me check this out real quick, and I will get right back to you on what was wrong. Okay, guys. So I figured out the problem. Um, instead of creating a new folder or new file and creating it, uh, run dot bat right away. Just keep it as new text document. Then go into it, and then you will go ahead and you will change, you know, what's inside of it to match what you want, and then save it as run dot bat as all files. Um, so now we have this run dot bat folder. Um, now what you're going to want to do before running this is you're going to come up here to EULA and this is, I don't know if they put it in the old ones, in like the older servers, but in the newer ones at least, um, there's this EULA file. And basically, go to the EULA site um, right here, read the EULA if you haven't read it yet. Um, like, you you might want to read it or you might want to hear about it because it's basically just telling you these are the rules you need to follow 
follow them or you get your server removed. So change this to true once you've read them. Click file, save. And then you can go ahead and close this. And then you're going to click on the run.bat. And over here, you'll see that it opens up a command prompt just like that one that we had up here before. It'll wait for a few seconds. It'll just like verify the jar file and it'll start running. Now we're going to let it keep running. It's just going to add a few things. If we look over here, if I put this, one second, move this this way and move this this way. You can see that it's adding stuff over here in just a second. Okay, there we go, starting now. Okay, so now it's going to say, you know, can't find this file, creating a new one. Can't find this file, creating a new one. And so, basically it's going to create all these files, which you just saw created. Now it's going to prepare the level world, and that's basically how to do it. Um, this video is not going to be on port forwarding or stuff like that. You guys will have to watch another video for that. If I went into that, that would be a way too long video. Just going to be how to set it up. You guys can change the settings and everything, and that's it. Um, while this is loading, after this is done loading, the next thing you want to do is stop the server and then add all the mods you want into this mods folder. Um, once you do that, basically, just run the server with all the mods again. Make sure they all work. To stop the server, by the way. Just type dash, or not dash, just stop, just like a regular server. And it should say, press any button to continue once it's done. And then it will be, oh no, it doesn't say it on here, I don't think. Yeah, okay, close it automatically. So then, basically that's that. What you guys are going to do is you're now going to add all the mods in, run that again. And then, you're going to go ahead and put this down while you open WinSCP. Grab WinSCP, open it up. Take a few seconds to open up. Uh, no, I don't want to save those. Uh, basically, you type in your IP for your server. You'll type in your port number, and then you'll type in what you what uh, you want to log in as. For most things, it's going to be under root, so I would suggest doing root there if you don't know what to put. Password leave blank for now because we'll add that in, in just a second. Um, you're going to want SFTP as the protocol. Okay, and then you're going to click login. And it'll, you know, searching for host, connecting to host, and it'll say authenticating, then type your password. You type your password, which should be given you, to you with your purchase of your VPS. It'll log you in, and there we go. Um, next thing you're going to do is go to your root subdirectory, like said, and you're going to want to create a server, or create a folder. I created Forge server right here, so you're going to click on whatever folder you just, you created, and you do that by just, you know, right-clicking new directory forge server and then basically you're going to create a folder and you're going to drag in everything that you had in this folder into that folder and that is what you're going to do there um, all the mods should be already in the folder and everything when you do it that way it's easy um, after that it might take a little bit to do that but after that you're just going to go ahead and close out of WinSCP okay and now you're going to open up PuTTY. So we double click on PuTTY, run. Um, you type in your host name, so mine would be 167.114.3.46. Your port, usually 22. Um, you're going to want SSH for this one, and then you're going to click open. Basically, it'll open up something that looks like this, just like the command prompt. It's going to say login as, you're going to have to put a root, and then your password again. Um, now, this is where most people kind of get confused. It is typing a password, actually. Its way of encrypting the password is just not showing it. And so that kind of confuses some people. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to um, decide what you want to do with your server. If you want your server to be running 24-7, then you're going to go down one path. If you want your server running just when you want it, just when you want to start it up, you're going to want to go down another path. So if you want your server running when you turn off your computer, when you close this window, you're going to want to do this. You're going to go to, or you're going to type screen dash S, capital S, then make a screen name. And so we're just going to call this one server, because why not? That sounds like a good one. Um, you're going to press enter, and it'll open up this new thing, kind of. It almost looks new. It has, like, no logs. And basically, what you're going to do in here is this will be a 24-7 running area. Whereas, if we go back wherever we were before, that is going to be, you know, only running sometimes. Only when you have this open. 
And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to type the following command. Or actually, you know what? Let me just go to my one that I already created because it's already in there. I'm just going to close this because it's faster to just get to it like that. Run. Okay. Just going to log in again once it asks me. Come on. Come on. Logging out on me. Okay. I think I just saw it do it right as I left. Dang it. Okay. Let's go there. Open. Give me the login, please. There we go. Root. Okay. So here's the normal directory. Um, now, once you've created that, what you're going to do inside there, and uh, just ignore this command for now. This is just to get to it real quick. This is the one that I already have created. What you're going to do from there is you're going to, and I've already stopped my server, you're going to type in this right here. So it's going to be Java, just like we typed in in the other uh, document. Java-XMX4G, which is 4 gigabytes, dash XMS4G, dash jar, the jar file, and no GUI. Exactly what we typed into the .bat file, except I just changed this because my uh, VPS actually has 4 gigabytes, so I used all 4. Um, and then you're going to click enter, and it'll do the exact same thing. It'll run your server just like that, and um, basically it'll keep it running forever. Now, I'm going to close this. Just the server will keep going because that keeps running forever. Let's say you open this back up. Let's run, putty. Minecraft VPS. Click open. Come on here. We log in. I might have just typed that wrong. Okay, now. You're saying, where's my server? Where's my server? Well, there's an easy, easy, easy way to get to it. What you're going to type is screen-r, which means reattach, then the name of the screen which you created. So mine would be Minecraft server. Um, now, sometimes it'll tell you there's no screen that can be reattached with that name. And the reason is that it's already attached to what there is there. And so usually this will bring you to it, but there's every one case where it's not, where it won't. And what you're going to need to do there is do dash D. Um, I'm sure there's probably a better way for it to like just access it, but this is how I found so far. So you're going to do screen dash D Minecraft server, and that'll basically detach it, and um, then we can reattach it. Um, and so basically that's another one. That's not the one that I was currently running, but um, yes. And so that's how you get to it, and if you don't want to keep it running 24-7, you can just come right in here, and you can just do the command wherever it is, the Java command that you did over in the other place. Um, right there. You can just run that in here, but that won't keep it going 24-7. Um, so that's how you set up a Forge server. To access any of the files on it, you just go back to WinSCP. You can now delete this one now, and so that's what I'm going to do. And um, have people install this right here, and they have to install all the mods that you added on your server. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'm open to any questions, and maybe if I get enough questions, because I'm guessing I will, I'll make a video just answering your guys' questions. Um, so I will see you guys later, and um, I hope this really helped you guys, because I think it's a great way to run a server. Uh, see you guys.